Um, okay, so in this short presentation, uh, we will focus on the harbour side of Apollonia in Libya. So if you, as you have seen from Nicole's presentation, um, Serene and Apollonia are really closely connected. Um, and we will focus on looking at some of the um, urban expansion that affect the site today. And we're also looking at uh, shoreline changes um, over time. Um, before I start, I will give you a very brief introduction to the MARIA project for those of you who are un unfamiliar with it. The MARIA project started in 2018 as a sister project of EMINA and is funded by Arcadia. The team is based at the University of Southampton in England and Ulster University in Northern Ireland. The project focuses on document documenting the coastal zone in a comprehensive manner. Uh, re recording coastal, near, near shore, and underwater sites visible from satellite images, aerial photographs, and maps. We are drawing on the EMINA methodology and are using the EMINA database. Our work also extends to documenting geoarchaeological evidence, which enables an understanding of past landscapes and environments. Um, and this, at this point, we also would like to thank our Libyan partners and the Department of Antiquities in Libya for providing images and drone footage for this exhibition, in particular, Dr. Ahmed Emraj and Fouad El Gomati. So Apollonia began its life as a port town of Cyrene and can be dated as early as the 7th century BCE. Apollonia developed into a busy and successful port town, so much so that it became the capital of Libya Superior in the 5th century AD. The town was abandoned by the Byzantine governor in 647 AD when the Arabs invaded the region. Although settlement continued, it was a much more modest, at a much more modest scale. The modern town of Susa started to develop west of the ruins in 1896. Today, much of Apollonia's harbor installation, buildings, and industrial features are located underwater. Probably at least two major earthquakes and related tidal waves damaged the city over its lifetime and caused the sinking of its harbor facilities and surrounding structures by about 3 to 3.5 meters. In, in antiquity, Apollonia's harbour was rather substantial. It consisted of two basins, both protected from the prevailing northwest wind. It underwent several alternations over its lifetime, which is beyond the scope of this presentation to detail. The harbour of Apollonia is particularly significant today because so much of its remains still survives underwater. There are no other early ports from the 6th and 7th century BCE that survive as completely as that of Apollonia. However, the recent collapse of the seawall and a reef caused serious threats and damage to both the archaeology on land and underwater, and my colleague Kieran Wesley will talk about this in more detail shortly. Today, much of the core of the ancient city is protected by a fence that surrounds the site. However, elements of the site that lie outside this protected zone, such as cemeteries or, or extramural buildings, are exposed to the threat of urban expansion. On the 3D model in the exhibition and on this drone image here, on these drone images, um, you can clearly see how the modern buildings um, are encroaching on the core of this archaeological site. In places, the modern buildings reach up to the protective fence and the construction of new access roads suggests that further construction is planned right up to the current perimeter of the core site. Unfortunately, much of the area outside the core of the ancient port city remains undocumented and some features will be or have already been lost. One example of this is the Western Cemetery of, of Apollonia. In 2000, a modern hotel complex was built on top of the Western necropolis, destroying at least 26 tombs. So uh, on this slide here, you can see um, what this city looked like, the, the small town of, of, of Susa in 1949. And in 2003, Susa has expanded to a much larger town. And by 2000 and uh, or today, 
um, the town has expanded even further and is now encroaching much more on the side of Apollonia, which is located here. I will now hand over to my colleague Kieran Wesley, who will talk in more detail about the coastal changes along the shore of Apollonia. Um, thanks, Julia. So obviously Apollonia being a site on the coast is heavily affected by coastal changes, in particular things such as coastal erosion. Um, that's a potentially major threat we see for many coastal sites, um, not simply in Libya, but around the world as well. Uh, one of the things we see for Apollonia is coastal change is not necessarily a new issue. Sea level has changed it as a, rather, as a result of tectonic activity. And even if we go back to um, early 19th century accounts, such as the survey by the Beachy brothers, you can see that elements of the coast have changed as well. These are indicated on this slide by the red arrows. But they also show that some areas in Apollonia have remained relatively stable. So in order to investigate this pattern further, what we did as part of the Maria project is to try and look in detail at the eroding coastal edge and use repeat imagery over different time steps or georeference so they nicely line up to trace this eroding edge and try and see how it has evolved over time. Our results suggest two key patterns. On the top, up here, we have the um, rate of change from 1949 to 2010. And at the bottom, we have the rate of change from 2010 to 2019. And these results seem to indicate two main things. Firstly, as you can see, the rate of change is variable even within this quite small area. How fast the coastline retreats depends on its exposure to waves and also the nature of the sediment um, composing the coastline. Um, the second uh, result that comes out is that there is, seems to be an acceleration in terms of coastal retreat in this area post-2010. These blue dots here indicate stability and the warm colors indicate retreat. And as you can see, we're starting to see an increase in the warm colors here, suggesting a faster rate of retreat within the last 10 years or so. Some areas, however, do seem to remain fairly stable uh, on this side. And other areas we are still uncertain about what is going on because the imagery doesn't tell us enough. But certainly for a large part of the site, there's a strong suggestion that there is faster retreat in the last 10 years or so. And the effects of this are clear in the present day. Thanks to our Libyan colleagues who've been uh, providing us with ground level photographs, we can see the exposure of uh, unrecorded structures, um, damage to existing structures as well. So these are potentially quite serious problems happening, happening at this site with the sea gradually eating away. Um, and causing the destruction of our project material. What we can also do is use this information to try and understand how the site might change in the future. We can see these yellow lines. These indicate the potential location of the shoreline based on the present day rates of erosion. And these red lines using a worst case scenario of um, erosion uh, based on global climate models. And the dashed line is for 2050, the solid line is for 2100. So this is over the next 50 to 100 years. So based on the present day rates, you may see the sea eating away at some of these sites and you'll be losing a few meters. And under a worst case scenario, you may see the wholesale destruction of some of these sites as well, um, if, if, um, if carbon emissions continue to rise. So actually what will happen in the future will heavily depend on the decisions made in the next two weeks of this uh, COP26 conference in Glasgow at the moment. Um, but these are some of the impacts that may affect the site in the future. Um, I'd like to finish by thanking Iconam and Iamina for having us, for including us in this ex exhibition. And please have a look at the website if you want to see more information for more detail on this as well, including the fantastic 3D model by Iconam. Okay, that's us. Thanks, Vijay.